Hello, uh, this isn't much of a tutorial, but just a quick video on the fact that Zen Framework 1.9 has finally uh, arrived. And uh, as you can see, I'm downloading it right now. Uh, the point of the video is to see uh, how well our existing project uh, going to work with uh, 1.9. So uh, I will try to make this video as unedited as possible. Um, so as to show uh, what it's like upgrading from 1.8 to 1.9. So before I actually unpack it uh, and uh, deploy it, uh, I'm going to uh, head over to the release notes uh, to see what it has available and um, actually read this ahead of time. Uh, so I'll go through this quickly. Uh, the the focus of this release is just as they say on uh, Enterprise and the PHP 5.3 support. Uh, that's great, uh, but um, it still doesn't support some of the newest, newest features in PHP 5.3, uh, that is namespacing. And um, in the next tutorial, uh, the module setup, and we're going to see why is that going to be an issue. Um, so some of the things that they improved on is uh, LDAP, feed readers, Dojo, and all the stuff we haven't ever talked about. Introduced some new things that are way beyond the scope of what we're doing. Uh, there's some interesting improvements on Zen DB table. Um, it looks interesting. We haven't covered the Zen DB table yet, so it's something to look into when I get to it. Uh, then there is a um, adapter for SQL server from Microsoft, I guess, so that's good news for Windows people. And um, then there is an update to translate, which uh, is good for me because I haven't um, luckily started the work on Zen Translate. Uh, so w when I do it, it's going to be full 1.9 support. Uh, and then this is the part that I want to draw attention to, Zen View Helper Base URL. Uh, this means that that uh, plugin helper that we did that tells us the base URL in the layout, uh, we don't have to have it anymore. Uh, Zen folks were nice enough to do it for us so we can throw that out. And I'm going to be testing um, how it looks um, in this upgrade process. Uh, then there is some extra new things down here. Again, none of this is uh, what we've been looking at so far. The XML thing looks interesting and the rest of it is just for like big APIs and services um, for some real big applications out there. Um, and then there is a detailed change log which is also uh, important to, to look at because it outlines everything from the technical point of view. Uh, so it's pretty important to read this. Um, for example, there is some changes in Zend form only works on first usage. Okay, got to check out what that is. Um, in addition to Zen config, navigation does not mark children of active pages. Okay, that may be relevant to some of the things that we did. Uh, so yeah, that's basically what you do. You go through this and you um, check things out that uh, you've learned and then uh, you go back to the new documentation now and see if what you know uh, already, um, sorry, to see if what you know uh, has any change in the manual. Uh, that's uh, something you have to do. Okay, so uh, let's just get straight to it. Uh, I should have downloaded everything. There we go, Zen Framework 1.9 is downloaded. And um, just to recap of how I have the setup here. Um, I have the Zen Framework uh, installed inside of the USR local on my Linux machine and Zen Framework CLI and I have a bunch of uh, Zen uh, projects going um, so I obviously don't want a separate library for each one of them that will make my hard drive pretty messy and um, once I make any changes to this folder all my projects get updated uh, so, um, just to show you exactly what that means, if I go to um, right library here, 
uh, right, C is pointing to this directory here. Okay, so once I get it here, uh, once I replace the old one, 1.8, just to show you that it is indeed 1.8, and just type in ZF, um, yeah, 1.84. Alright, so I'm going to navigate to this folder and I'm going to wipe out this directory here, then framework CLI. I just want to start from scratch with 1.9. I'm going to take it out. So I'm going to um, remove that completely. Framework CLI. And that folder is no more. So I, in fact, if I actually try to go to, yeah, I don't get anything. Uh, the thing is completely out there, out of there. So let's go back to it now and extract that folder. Okay, that's too much to type. Okay, there it goes. All extracted, and uh, I'm just going to take uh, the 1.10.0 out of there so that uh, and put the CLI back in there because that's what it was called before. And I want to keep the folder names the same so that I don't have to update any of my sim links. So I'm going to move. Zend frame work 1.9.0 to Zend frame work CLI. I think it was. Yeah, it changed. Okay. So it all looks the same, and let's see if that ZF got updated. Yep, we're now looking at ZF 1.9.0. Great. Let's now look at our project. Great, it actually still works. Wonderful. So let's just try some of the things that we did before. Okay, I can still log in. I can still browse the lists. Uh, I can log out. Rob, pass to. Okay. Uh, controllers, action, navigation. Uh, database all seem to be working fine. Oh yeah, uh, as I said before, the base URL uh, was added and is now part of the library. So we do not want that view helper anymore. So as a reminder, this is what we did in order to get. Um, this guy to work. Now base URL is a part of uh, the view by default. So we're going to just delete that file. And if I was still in 1.8, then I would get a fatal error telling me that the helper can't be found. If 1.9 indeed lives up to its name, it still works. Awesome. Oh meaning that base URL is now part of the Zen framework as the default. Great. Uh, so aside from that, um, I don't see anything that uh, we need to worry about uh, in the transition. Uh, so looks like this is a nice transition uh, and means that I can continue creating tutorials uh, from where we left. Uh, off without having to introduce anything else or fix up anything before. So um, sorry for the rumble. I hope you're reassured that uh, we're ready for the next version and I'll see you in the next real tutorial.